Dewey, I really appreciate your faith in me in esports. One day, maybe I will be into it as much as you. Maybe not League of Legends, but I do watch StarCraft tournaments, so I have that one up on Raymond, who doesn't really like competitive gaming at all. And I got thinking today about the video I was going to make, and it's not going to be quick edited like so many of my videos. It's just going to be a story about Media Cows, because I saw the videos that Tom and Raymond made, and it's about upcoming games, upcoming DLC, and, and an upcoming game. And I'm not really paying attention to the gaming scene all that much right now because I'm knee-deep in Assassin's Creed 3. Well, not really knee-deep because I'm only in sequence 2. Trying to catch up on Assassin's Creed 3 and finish my walkthrough for Fusion Cap, which, as you're aware, is a second channel that I have. My viewers over there are, like, craving me to finally finish it, and I figure I owe it that much. And it got me reminiscing when I was thinking about this video, about the start of Media Cows. And I know some of our viewers are always curious about the story of how it started, how Raymond got into Media Cows, how Tom got into Media Cows, and all of that. And so I figured I'd tell them. And it's just going to be a story time, so it might be a little bit longer. And if you're not interested in the beginning of Media Cows, well, then you're probably not going to be interested in this video. So I started it, I started the genesis of the idea with my cousin Nathan, and we were in Wisconsin Dells at Noah's Ark, and we were sitting in an RV, I think it was, and we really liked podcasts. So we started to record a podcast, just us talking to each other, and we got really obsessed with it and we were listening to our podcasts over and over again, just the same thing, and anyone who watches would think we're insane. We're in Wisconsin Dells, and we're just talking about video games. And we started coming up with names, because we were like, okay, let's start maybe reviewing games, we'll have this podcast. And <clears throat> we were switching kind of back and forth between gaming cows and media cows. And we just didn't really like how gaming cows sounded, and I didn't want to limit it necessarily to games, because I love movies, I love TV. And so if we were going to have this group, I decided media cows would be a good option. I don't know why my light is flickering back and forth. Um, but then that kind of died because my cousin Nathan doesn't have the strongest work ethic in the world. I love him, but it's, he was not going to be reviewing any games with me. And it was just going to be reviewing them. There were no walkthroughs. It was just reviewing. Um, and this was in 2008 or 2009, so YouTube wasn't even on the table. This wasn't, that was, had nothing to do with the idea. It was just the name. We were going to have a podcast, and we were going to review games just for fun to maybe get into the gaming scene. Um, and then I talked to my friend Austin, who used to be in Media Cows way back in 2010, when we didn't do commentary, so I don't think his voice is at all on the channel, but he did the walkthrough for Kanan Lynch 2. I th that might be his only walkthrough. Um, but anyways, he was my best friend at the time, and we wanted to go to E3. And the deal with E3 was, this was always my dream, was to go to E3. And... The, they changed the rules. It was no longer open to the public. You had to be in the industry. And I was like, shit, that means I'm never going to be able to go there. I would stay up with my cousins all night just re-watching E3 press conferences. And we would eat like spoonfuls of sugar and get all excited about console wars. And that was like in 2006, 2007. Um, and so we were really into E3 and it was something that I loved. I loved the new console announcements that happened at E3 in particular. And we knew, though, we couldn't go into E3 unless we were in the industry. So we're like, we're going to start this review outlet. And I said, perfect. I have a name, Media Cows. I kind of was coming up with this idea with my cousin, and it fit, and we were really into it. Um, and then that just fizzled out, though. We didn't really do any work with it. We didn't get any websites. We didn't practice writing at all. And at the time, he was also into comic book drawing, so we, Penny Arcade was an influence. We're like, oh, we can, we can draw comics, video game related comics too, and it would be a lot of fun, and then we'll be able to go to E3 and play all of these games. No hope of really making any money or having it be a career or anything at the time, just going to E3. And then it all kind of swung into gear when I went to Hawaii for my birthday in April of 2010. I, I went there with my cousin and my family from Illinois. And I was telling him about this media cows thing, and he was like, really? Sorry about that, my camera died, so I had to switch batteries. It's kind of a pain in the ass. But so we, I was in Hawaii for my birthday, and we were just like riding around in a rental car off the beaten path on the big island of Hawaii. And I was talking to him about this idea, and he was really excited, and we were just generating ideas. We were like, okay, we can do this, review games this way. And at the time, I was also looking on YouTube. I started to watch YouTube more, and I was watching guys like Darkside Phil, if you, if you know who he is. He's a Let's Player. He's been around forever. Um, I watched guys like C-Nanners. And I thought to myself, you know what? I can do this too. And 
I can get these games early. I had access to these games early through retail stores. Um, so I'm like, I can get in there first. And that was, that's how it started. Um, so if you're an old follower of Media Cows, you know that, you know, it was commentary less walkthroughs. I didn't have a microphone when I started. I just posted, I started with Iron Man 2, and um, it was a success right away, but I, I don't want to just jump into that real quick because I want to finish up the story about my cousin. Um, we started talking more and more about not just reviewing games because I was like, okay, I've been watching YouTube and there's these people who do Let's Plays and walkthroughs on there, and I think, I think that could work. And so Blake was like, yeah, he, he was excited. He's like, I can help you make videos. Um, Blake, Blake's voice is in some of the videos on Media Cows. Um, body Count, I know he did commentary for. And then I gave him permission to quit that game because it was terrible. It was awful and it glitched out on him. He would, have had to start it, he would have had to start it over. But he was very much functioned as a freelancer when um, me, Dewey, and Raymond wouldn't have enough time for certain games he would, he would function. Plus he was like... 14 at the time, so it's like it couldn't be his job. Um, but so yeah, he, he was really excited and I came back and I started it by myself. I, I didn't start it with any collaboration. I guess I sort of started with my friend Austin, but he hadn't done anything. Like we were doing a website and he was going to do weekly comics, um, but he never did that. He did one comic. Um, but So I did Iron Man 2, Lost Planet 2, and my first scare was Alan Wake. I, I was in college, and I'm like, okay, I can put up Alan Wake, so I put up Alan Wake early, and I got a message from the developers of the game, Remedy. I think it's Remedy. Yeah. Remedy. And they said, we want to give you this opportunity to take the video down, and people at the time were saying, no, just say, screw them. And no one really knew copyright strikes, because everything was really young on YouTube. Like, it's not like it how, how it was now. And I made the decision to take it down. I said, okay. I'll listen to you guys, and other people that had it up at the time, uh, they got copyright strikes, and then their channels were deleted. So it's like, whew, crisis averted. Um, I started, though, with Iron Man 2, and I was really nervous. I bought an HD PVR, I saved up. I didn't have any money back then. I was broke, and I spent all my money on this HD PVR, all in the hopes of going to E3. I was so excited for E3. And it, it kind of blew up. Like, our Iron Man 2 has, I think, 200,000 views. I couldn't believe it. Like, we have walkthroughs now that have over a million views. Uh, my Assassin's Creed 3 walkthrough on Fusion Cap is like 4 million views. Um, but 200,000 views. I, I, and it got like 100,000 views very, very quickly. I was mind blown. I'm like, all right, I can do it again next week, Lost Planet 2, and I just kept it going. Um, I soon became overwhelmed because there were too many games coming out in a short period of time and I didn't have enough time to play them all. Uh, but I did finish Iron Man 2 and Lost Planet 2. And around that time, I was talking to my friend Dewey, and Dewey and I were friends in high school. We both got suspended for hacking. I kind of roped him into it. Uh, the, the story about the hacking is the, the school didn't have protection on their network, and so we were able to access like all of the, the school district's files and everything. And so I showed Dewey this, and he got suspended too. Um, I got suspended for seven days, he got suspended for five days. So we were kind of friends in high school, his parents were really pissed at me for that. And then we became better friends though after high school, once he got back from going to college in Brainerd, I think, or St. Cloud, one of the two. Uh, anyways, and he was really nervous, correct this light, he was really nervous because Austin, who he knew, he was kind of friends with Austin, was like a stickler for quality. Austin's an amazing writer, and he's like, there's no way I can live up to what you and Austin do. I'm like, don't worry about it, who cares? We're doing video, so your writing skill doesn't even matter all that much. Um, and he started with Guild Wars 1. He did a Let's Play of Guild Wars 1. He might have actually started with the review for Team Fortress 2. And it was, it was just so funny because around this time, like early 2010, I was over at Dewey's apartment, like every night until 7 a.m. working. And then I would drive home in rush hour traffic but not to go to work like everyone else, but to go home and sleep. Um, yeah, like, if if he watches this and then he tells a little bit of the story, like, I know he can attest to that. Like, every night I was over there and we were up all night playing through games like Alpha Protocol together, which was terribly frustrating on the hardest difficulty. Um, and so that entire year of 2010, we were playing a, a shit ton of games. We were trying to review it, but n neither me or him, like, I don't like to write. Um, 
So we were trying to be a traditional outlet like IGN because we thought it was necessary to go to E3, go to PAX, which then became an idea. Um, I'm saying um a lot, but I'm not editing stuff out. Um, and so he, we like, we weren't really practicing our writing all that much. We were just doing video creation. Austin was trying to write but wasn't doing much video creation. And I think, like, we got our first game. We got our first review copy for Disney Sing It, which is like one of, still one of our favorite games that of this generation. It was for the Wii, I think. But it was songs like, Can You Feel the Love Tonight in a Whole New World from Disney? We love Disney movies. So Dewey and I would be up all night singing together these, these songs, and it's just ridiculous. If we, we should have filmed it, but we didn't. We were like, we need to be professional, and why would anyone want to see a walkthrough of this? We didn't think we could do a video uh, filming us singing these songs, and maybe people would like it. Maybe they would hate us, but maybe they would like it. Now, the downfall of Austin, because Austin's no longer in Media Cows, happened with Disney Sing It, that he would not sing these songs with us. He was like, I'm too good for this, this is an embarrassment, um, and Dewey wasn't happy about that, and so they weren't getting along all that much after that, and then Austin moved to North Dakota for college, and just wasn't involved anymore, and then eventually he quit. Um, but before he quit, we were thinking about bringing new people on. At this time, still, we weren't making any money. And so there was this girl, Alyssa, who were like, this is us as, as guys, right? She's a girl, she's pretty good looking. People will love her on the internet. And also Raymond. And we went through this whole interview process and Austin was our HR director. So we had all of these different positions. Like I was CEO, I was CFO, and there were like chief creative officer. We were so stupid, we were like, oh, we, we're a company. We need these positions and we're trying to establish all of this stuff. Um, and so this is when we then interviewed and we asked people about their favorite games. And so we interviewed Alyssa, this, this girl Alyssa, who I, if you, if you can at all go back and listen to any of our old podcasts, Alyssa's in some of that. But the interview went great with Alyssa. It was just me and Austin. Dewey wasn't present in these interviews because I was the CEO. I was the one that had the final say on things. Austin was HR, so it was only our responsibilities. So the interview went well. We did it at Applebee's. We recorded the whole thing on our flip cameras because we didn't have nice cameras back then. We just had flip cameras. And um, then we interviewed Raymond. And Raymond, if you, like, you, you, you know Raymond as viewers, so Raymond gets really obsessed, and it's not a bad thing, with games like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. He got really obsessed with Uncharted, Fallout, that type of stuff. Amazing games, right? So he spends the whole time, we're, we're meeting at Perkins. And Raymond wasn't my friend, he was in a, he, we'll call him an acquaintance. I got along with him, but he was friends with my friend Ashton, who I was friends with since I was a freshman in high school. And so I got along with Raymond, Raymond had long Jesus hair back then, um, and so we go to Perkins, and he's just going on about San Andreas, and Austin's like falling asleep. And afterwards we talk about him, like, I really like this Raymond guy. <laughs> I like how passionate he's about games, and Austin is like, he's so boring, no one cares, ugh. Um, but Alyssa's great. But then we required them to write a written review, and, because we were going to be doing written reviews at the time. And, oh my god, Alyssa's review was so terrible. I'm talking... It's, I'll just leave it at, it was awful, because I don't want to bash her too much in the video. Nice person, just not good writing at all. But Raymond's review was freaking fantastic. It was like on the level of something that I'd see on, an, on a website like GameSpot, or whatever. Pick, pick the, uh, the big site that you, you want to mention. It was a professional quality review, and it was amazing. And then we sat down and we talked, all three of us, me, Dewey, and Austin, about who we wanted to bring on board. And... Austin was like, we shouldn't bring Raymond on board. Um, he, he's boring when he's talking about games. I'm like, what, are you kidding me? He's a fantastic writer and he's into games. And Dewey's like, we have to bring Raymond on board. It's Alyssa we need to be worried about. But we're like, all right, she can learn to write. It's no big deal. So then eventually, like, then we brought them both on board in the fall of 2010. I'm going to try to speed this up because otherwise we can go on forever. Um, but so then what happens is Austin quits. And so then it's me, Dewey, Alyssa, and Raymond, and then kind of my cousins who are on sort of as freelancers when we need them. And we're doing podcasts, and we're driving to Dewey's every day. Raymond had a, um, I think it was a second girlfriend at the time. Um, she had a kid, and he was feeling very conflicted because he was working all the time at Dewey's. And there was at one point when Raymond said to me, I can't do it anymore. I need a break. 
and I got really pissed off at him and I said, if you take a break, you're done, you're out. And he's like, no, no, I don't want to quit. So I'm like, all right, let's, let's talk about it. Let's not be rash. And like, I didn't know what I was, neither one of us knew what we were doing. So then I'm like, what about if we just go to Dewey's every other day and work on this stuff? Um, and so everything worked out. Then we did podcasts every day. We talked with like the guys who made Super Meat Boy. We went to PAX. Also, I completely forgot that Dewey's, like Dewey's best friend Nick Doms was in the company at the time, but then he moved to Japan, or he was already moving to Japan. He, anyways, Nick Doms went to the first PAX with us, and, um, oh my god, just going back and thinking about all of this stuff. Then he went to Japan, it was hard to, like, keep involving him, because he was in Japan, um, studying for school. So, he kind of went away, and then... Eventually, Alyssa quit as well, right before we started making money. So in the fall of 2010, that's when Machinima contacted us, and we were like, we can make money on YouTube. Like, Dewey and I were crying. We could, like, we could, we could make a living out of this, what? And then Alyssa quit. So, <laughs> so then it was just me, Dewey, and Raymond. And, um, and yeah, then money started coming in. And when that first paycheck came in from Machinima, it was something like like twenty thousand dollars the first paycheck paycheck I was at my cousin's birthday this was February 2011 and I had to get up and start pacing I I was gonna start crying because the money was actually there um, so then money started to come in and that's why I'm gonna leave this video if you want to hear the rest of the story like when Tom came and the, the camera died again and it's gonna keep on dying so I kind of have to end this video short and I know it's somewhat of a long video anyways um, if you want to hear the rest of the story how Tom kind of got into media cows and then sort of what happened how we got out of commentary less walkthroughs and that kind of stuff and some of the behind the scenes stuff with competition with guys like Ghost Robo and stuff um, let me know in the comments, and then make, I, I'm not ignoring the video I made yesterday about the, the YouTube network stuff. Um, I'm just giving more time for new questions to come in, so if you're curious about that, that's how it's going to work. Um, and also, if you're wondering at all about the kind of the shift in, uh, like how the four of us are making videos, like individual videos every day, if you're wondering at all about that, I can explain that in the next video as well. So, I will see you guys tomorrow.